and welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you so much for joining me. For today, I'm going to review a classic of anime in a very weird way, Golden Boy. Uh, Golden Boy is an OVA from 1995, I believe, and um, it was, yes, it was a, a, a fairly short OVA, six episodes, uh, uh, released in America only a year afterwards. So this is one of those anime that came over here pretty darn quickly. Rather unusual kind of a show. Um, it is about a young man, you see very serious over here, who is um, 25 years old, works a lot of odd jobs. Uh, this is just kind of his story about the different odd jobs he gets involved in. He's a bit of a pervert, um, and he tends to get jobs where there are beautiful women around and he ends up getting involved with them. It is not hentai, it's not an adult title, but it is very pervy. Uh, a lot of girls in, well, as you can see, um, revealing clothes, um, some of whom he certainly gets uh, very intimately acquainted with. What's remarkable about Golden Boy is that this takes a very light tone with the whole thing. Um, the main character is, uh, his, name, his name is Kentaro, um, maintains this very interesting kind of Lupin the Third aspect to him, where you're never quite sure how lucky he is or how much he's planned everything that's, that's gone on. Um, he will sort of breeze into town, take on an odd job, and then suddenly do something incredibly skilled with you know, a motorcycle or something along those lines. And you just can't, it's like, he can't possibly know that much. He can't possibly do that. But sure enough. Um, so it is a light, upbeat story um, that pulls you along because of those stories. In other words, it's not just guy and cute girls. Uh, there's also this question of how he's going to maybe impress the girl or impress the boss um, or otherwise, you know, do something interesting um, in, the, in the situation he's in. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I think Golden Boy has become something of a classic. Uh, Kintaro is fun to spend time with in that sense, because you're always wondering what he's going to pull out of his back pocket. Um, it's also remarkable for the animation. Golden Boy has some very beautifully animated sequences. Obviously, the folks involved really cared. Uh, it's also one of those anime where, like, Cars and motorcycles are drawn in loving detail. Um, so there's this kind of uh, mecha fascination in the show, which um, is a lot of fun to, to look at because you get, you get the detail. You get people really you know, diving into um, all this. They, they obviously really care about the subjects, which is also important when you have these, these short stories. Um, you know, if they were making, you know, if, if you were in a motorcycle club, for example, then you could focus on the motorcycle club and you could kind of dive deep into that. But when it's just kind of, you know, new job of the week, to have the actual care about each of those jobs pulls you in and, and, and helps a lot. Uh, and it also helps keep the animation fresh and keep it interesting because they're drawing something new a lot of the time. Um, now, Golden Boy is one of those uh, things that because it is a kind of a light, goofy, somewhat etchy series, it is not particularly remarkable in terms of its direction and its editing and its cinematography. Um, it is very well told. It is clean and clear what's going on. Um, but you're probably never going to have a moment where you're like, wow, the editing in this just blows my mind. You know, the way it paces things is just incredible. Uh, there are one or two moments, um, particularly there's a, a, a quiet story about a girl who's very reserved, uh, which I happen to like a lot. And... Um, the, the pacing in that is wonderfully quiet, um, but in a way that fits the story and that helps you really understand the characters. Uh, so I was, I was really impressed with that one. Uh, but in general, again, the direction is, is perfectly fine, but kind of unremarkable. Now, uh, as I said, Kentaro is a fun character to watch. The girls are all generally, f um, they are more dimensional than you would expect for an etchy six-episode OVA. Uh, there's always a little bit more going on in their lives than, than they would need to have. Uh, there's almost always some secret or something special that you learn about the character 
over the course of the episode. Um, that said, much of the story is about, let's be honest, ogling pretty girls. So there's not huge amounts of depth to the characters. Even Kentaro remains something of a mystery throughout the entire OVA. Um, so just be aware of that. This is very much a, an episodic kind of a story. This is not building up to some big reveal at the end. Um, it is just, you know, Kentaro having his adventures and meeting these different characters. One thing I did appreciate is that it's easy for a story like this to become, uh, to have characters who are very similar, where, you know, every, every job he comes in, there's a girl who initially thinks he's a complete idiot, and then he kind of proves himself to her, uh, and then she falls madly in love with him. And while that is a general pattern of the show... Um, often the girl is just kind of standoffish or just kind of like, eh, whatever. Um, and, you know, they, they vary that quite a bit. Um, and often it's just, you know, she, you know, he impresses her very quickly, you know, first, first off. So they, I think they did, they did a fine job there. Um, you know, again, nothing that will, that will blow your mind, um, but more than they needed to do. Now, I like to talk about believability when it comes to these things, because I think it's important to kind of establish where we are in the um, on the believability spectrum for anime. Anime can be pretty weird, um, especially something where you've got a guy who is constantly, you know, wooing girls, although he's not always doing that. Sometimes he's just, you know, um, around a pretty girl and maybe trying to impress her or whatever. But um, point being, this is a pretty goofy show. <laughs> It's grounded in reality to the point where, again, girls aren't falling all over themselves all around him. Uh, that said, he has ridiculous abilities sometimes. Again, every time he gets involved in something, every, every new job, he sometimes seems how to be an expert. Is that, how do you do that? Um, so it does not take itself seriously. That said, this is not a, th a place where um, sexual fantasies are coming true at any opportunity. Um, it is definitely set in, in the real world of the mid-90s. Um, so you're not going to get pulled way out of your comfort zone in terms of the kinds of situations he gets into. It's one of the nice things about the show, actually, to me, um, is it stays relatively grounded in terms of, you know, it takes a ridiculous, um, concept, but tells that in a, um, relatively grounded real world, I'll put it that way. Um, I'll admit, I listened to this with the English dub, which was perfectly fine. I thought they did a fine job with all the characters. Not listen to the Japanese dub. Um, I would have a difficult time understanding if a Japanese dub was actually representing things like scorn accurately. I think in a, in a work like this, where you're dealing with um, characters who have very, um, very different emotional reactions to each other, and where you're trying to express... Um, things that are not necessarily polite, I think it's something that will not translate very well to an American ear. Um, sometimes it can be way more over the top than it should be in Japanese, for example. Um, so I can't judge that, but certainly dub, no problem. I found it perfectly acceptable. Um, Golden Boy is one of those things that is not for everyone. A lot of folks are going to watch this and just be completely turned off. Um, it should also be certainly noted that this is a series in which there are a bunch of cute girls wearing, you know, um, who are presented as physically attractive things and as, as, as um, primarily interesting for how pretty they are. Um, so if you don't like that, I totally appreciate that. I totally get that. Um, I will say that what I appreciate about Golden Boy is that it, um, it does not treat them as purely sexual or physical objects. Um, they all have personalities. They all have jobs and things to do and they are treated as people as as characters that way and also i should point out kintaro's um constant attraction to these girls is often lampooned as absurd like this constant attraction this constant sexuality he has is shown as dumb and ridiculous and not something to emulate Right, um, you know, they're not showing this as normal or expected or reasonable behavior. Um, so it is, 
it's the weird thing about Golden Boy. Taken on in that, it is this goofy, weird, fun little show with a lot of you know, cute characters, um, but it's often its own territory. And so I think it's something that if you've heard about it, it sounds interesting. It is. Um, it may be one of those things that you you find that you really enjoy. But you've definitely got to take it as a distinct property, as something that exists in its own little world and its own uh, under its own little rules. Um, and as that, I find it's a it's a fun little vacation. Hope you find this useful. And until next time, watch more interesting stuff.